Hi, this is John. In this video, I'll show you how to make a rocket out of a crayon bank. Many people have seen these in toy stores and thought, wow, that looks like a rocket. So in this video, let's make it into one. One thing to be aware of is there are several versions of the crayon bank. This one I bought on Amazon based on positive reviews, but it turned out to be fulfilled by Toys R Us. Now, if we take the bank apart, we have the body made out of cardboard, not unlike a lock tube, although a little bit softer cardboard. We have a butt piece, and we have what's quite plausibly a nose cup. Both these pieces slide into the cardboard body with short shoulders, so this is already starting to look a lot like pieces to a rocket. So then we need to figure out exactly how we're going to adapt this to be a rocket. I decided to use polycarbonate fins because I wanted them to be clear. This meant a little more aft weight. The rocket is also a little under 9 to 1 length to diameter ratio. The combination of these two things meant I was going to need to use at least a pound of nose weight. This is why it's a good idea to run a preliminary simulation. You won't have exact values since you don't have the final mass and center of gravity, but at least you can get an idea of what you'll have to do to make a stable flight on motors that you'd likely use. So let's turn to the nose cone. The first thing we need to do is patch this giant slot for depositing coins. What I've done here is make a thin styrene strip and curved it and then glued on a thicker styrene strip that will plug the slot. Then it's simply a matter of gluing it to the inside with plastic adhesive. We can easily get inside put the strip in to fill the slot. Now let's take a look at the inside. I'm going to epoxy some weight in the tip and then fill the rest of the nose with two-part expanding foam. So I scuffed up the inside with coarse sandpaper and put a bit of fiberglass behind the plug to provide a nice solid surface. Once the inside is solidly reinforced, it's time to clean up the outside. I masked tightly around the edges of the slot and then filled in the gap with white squadron putty. I'm not painting any part of this rocket, so I want to make sure I don't mess up the existing surface of the nose. Once the squadron putty dries, I can sand it, leaving the tape in place to protect the rest of the nose. Here I am sanding with 220, but once all the scratches are removed with 220, I'll also sand with 320 and 400 for a nice smooth surface. Here's the surface sanded. You can see it's nice and smooth and it fills in just the slot area. Now I can take off the tape, revealing the filled slot, nice and clean, and the undamaged rest of the nose. And then finally, we need to make sure that the nose can slide into and out of the body. Use a sharp hobby knife to trim off the nubs and the ridges that run around the shoulder. This takes a bit of time, but go carefully. You don't need to remove all the ridges. You just need to remove the highest parts all the way around. I decided to make the fins for this rocket out of plastic so they would be clear and not show up out on the launch pad. If you decide to use plastic fins, make sure you use polycarbonate, not another kind of plastic because polycarbonate is shatter resistant. Another trick when using plastic fins is that you need to provide mechanical bonding of the fins themselves because they won't epoxy well. Whatever kind of fins you use, you'll have to slot the aft end of the crayon bank to create space so that they can stick through. I also hollowed out the aft end and drilled screw holes that screw in to T-nuts on the aft end 
of the interior of the fin cam. Here I've mounted the fins onto the fin cam and I now can insert it into the aft end of the crayon bank into the slots. You want to try to make the slots as tight as possible, but it's hard to get it perfect. So do the best you can to make a tight fitting result around the fins. Here's the aft end showing the screws that hold it all together. Of course, you also need to slot some part of the main airframe. So we can slide that over the fin can, mark the space for the fins, and get ready to cut. As always when cutting cardboard, mark, use a straight edge, and cut with a knife in many shallow passes. There's no hurry, you'll get a much better result if you do many passes and let the knife do most of the work in cutting through the cardboard fibers. Now roll the tube, set the guide, and cut the other side of the slot. If you make even passes without too much pressure, you won't tear or deform the tube and you'll get a nice clean slot. Once the slots are cut, everything's ready for final assembly of the aft end. And the final step is a little epoxy to lock the fin can in place. For rockets of questionable stability, it's always good to verify that they really will be stable with the motors you plan to fly. From the simulator, we find the center of pressure and mark it on the rocket. And then we balance to find the dry center of gravity. Definitely not enough static stability margin. And of course, if we add a motor, as it actually would be in flight, we're actually unstable with the center of gravity behind the center of pressure. And so we counter that by adding nose weight. Here you see me trial balancing the rocket with nose weight and with the motor. Now the CG is well in front of the CP. Now we're going to bond this nose weight in the form of lead shot into the tip of the nose. This is quite a large volume and of course it's a lot of weight. So mix up enough epoxy to saturate the lead shot, but not enough so that there's a lot more epoxy than shot. Ideally, you want a matrix of roughly equal mix. Then you can pour this into the nose, filling up the tip. Once the nose weight is in place and packed in, we're going to let this cure dipped in a bucket of water. This volume of epoxy can generate a lot of heat and kick off really fast, which we don't want. Once the epoxy was fully cured, I decided to fill the rest of the nose cone with two-part expanding foam. Actually, I'm just filling up the triangular part and placing a bulkhead behind the shoulder in the forward end of the straight section. This leaves the aft end of the straight section and the short shoulder of the nose cone for an electronics bay. Two-part expanding foam is a bit tricky to work with. You may want to check out my other instructional video for more tips. And then once the expanding foam has cured, a fillet of epoxy around the rim. Of course, epoxy doesn't stick all that well to plastic, but scuffing up the inside with sandpaper hopefully will give enough of a bond to keep it together. Even with the nose full, there's still space for a small electronics bay. Now that we have the rocket complete, we can get the final weight to size the parachute and otherwise set up the recovery system. I also like to get a direct measurement for the dry center of gravity, which makes for more accurate simulations. 
Also, since we have a very heavy nose cone, make sure you use an extra long bridle and a plenty large parachute. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how I made my crayon, and I hope even more that it inspires you to add one to your own twist.